I have a lot of correspondence with people with mental health problems who um, see me as a kind of kindred spirit or as a person who's providing them with some kind of therapy uh, or, or some kind of alternative way of thinking that's useful to them. And that's something that I find very, uh, it makes me very happy. I think the, the nature of the work has probably changed as I've got older. I think it was darker and more morbid, more depressing before, whereas it's kind of lighter. There is a certain a kindness and generosity is perhaps um, more thinly veiled than it ever was before. And I think that's probably because as a, as a person, I, I, I just don't have the stomach for the misery anymore. <laughs> Like even though I'm sort of a cartoonist and my work sort of is cartoons, I've never actually been interested in cartoons. Like I don't really have any interest in graphic novels and stuff. My um, education is all about fine art. It's all about Marcel Duchamp and Andy Warhol. Going back to what Dada was, it was just something that was completely other, that was anarchic and rebellious, taking everything and subverting everything, doing things that were just completely absurd. And, you know, the comedy of it, I guess, really excited me. Good morning. Good morning to you. Excuse me, sir. What? It is not permitted to put your horse in the washing machine. I've always made work that's intuitive and responds to a certain situation. And it's, I suppose it's become a certain body of work with a certain facets to it. But it, you know, it's really just happened by accident to some extent, but then I'm really aware that that way of making work is, is sort of the reason why I can't do anything different. Um, I quite like that one, but the egg's not very good. Okay. You know, the drawings I just end up being whatever gets drawn in a certain time, and uh, the ones that don't get torn up and thrown in the bin. I could do it again. I go to exhibitions, oh, I see other people's art, and I'm like, wow, that's great. I really love that work. Um, but I know that I can't make that kind of work because I'm sort of not allowed. And whilst, you know, I do sort of deviate and make performance things and make other things, I'm on this path, and I can't suddenly just be a shapeshifter and make something else. A series of electric guitars that I made for, um, I designed them. My friend Tom actually made them. They're sort of designed aesthetically rather than in order to play well. I think when you're in your early 20s, you don't, I don't know, I didn't really have a perception of what a career as an artist could be. I didn't really think that was an option at the time. So I think that's why I started making books. I kind of, I thought that maybe I could have a career as a cartoonist, even though I didn't really know very much about cartoons or graphic art. And I actually really liked making the books and I liked making the drawings and suddenly that became the central part of what, what I did. A completely another way to, to make sense of the world and another way to make art. I guess you have to understand that this was in the age prior to the internet. So had I, had I graduated, I don't know, 15 years later, maybe I would have done something rather different. I've been a professional artist, I suppose, for more than 20 years and being an artist of, well, being a, a student artist and a struggling artist for my entire adult life. Um, but I, I do think that making art is, is a healthy thing for people to do. So I think that I'm, I'm lucky to do that as a, as a career. I think I've become more aware of my role, or what I perceive to be my role in the world. And that it's to try and make it a better place, rather than to make people 
uncomfortable. <laughs> so um, there is a message, a positive, optimistic message buried beneath the uh, the mordant darkness within my work, hopefully. Um, and people just see it as being ironic because of what I've done before. <laughs> Whereas actually I genuinely mean it. <laughs>